Hi there, uh, my name is Devin Parrish. I am a technical instructor and a technical writer at Mirantis. And today what we're gonna talk about is the core concepts of what makes up a cloud. Now to fully understand a cloud, we have to go through quite a bit of material so that you have a good grasp of the fundamental concepts behind what a cloud is. What we will first do is provide a definition and description of the term cloud. It can be quite ominous and a little bit confusing to many. So let's go and take a look at what makes up a cloud and through its definition. We will then take a look at a model known as the SPI model. And this SPI model is at three tiers in which a cloud is situated. We will discuss what those tiers are and we'll provide some examples of different cloud offerings and where they situate themselves in that tier. We will then go and take a look at some different cloud deployment models. You may hear different terms such as private, public, hybrid clouds. We will take a formal look and discuss what those actually mean. There's a very popular open source cloud offering that provides infrastructure as a service called OpenStack and we are going to focus our attention on describing what OpenStack provides to individuals and businesses. The fact that OpenStack is open source is very beneficial. We'll take a look at why that is, and we'll also take a look at some use cases as to how OpenStack is being used today by organizations and individuals across the globe. We will then take a look at the OpenStack ecosystem and how it, how it works under the hood. Now, a cloud. That cloud can be a little bit ominous to, to some people. It's, it's getting more and more understood. However, there's still some misconceptions about what a cloud is. So to formally understand a cloud, let's go to the definition or description that comes from an organization known as NIST, the National Institute for Standard, of Standards and Technology. What NIST has said is that cloud computing offers ubiquitous, convenient, on-demand, network access to a shared pool of configurable computing resources that can be rapidly provisioned and released with minimal management effort or service provider interaction. Essentially what a cloud does is it offers five core characteristics or features. It is these five characteristics or features that make a cloud truly a cloud. Now those five features are firstly on-demand self-service. So to understand on-demand self-service, let's kind of take a step back and consider traditional IT. So with traditional IT, clients to IT, when they need something, they go and open up a ticket or maybe a series of tickets. Those tickets go get assigned to IT and IT will eventually fulfill those tickets. So if I, as a client to IT, need a server and I need a server with networking and storage an operating system and applications installed and all of that kind of fun stuff. And what I do is I go and provide that description to IT and then someone actually has to go and rack a server, install it with an operating system, install it with my software and so on and so on and so on. Now the whole idea as to how that works is I have, I have an unknown fulfillment time at the end of the day. I don't know as the client IT when my server is going to be up and running and when I can actually go and deploy my application on that server. So what a cloud offers is it allows for IT to go and provide a portal and where this portal will allow for clients to IT to go and describe the resource such as the server, the operating system on that server, networking, storage, and so on. And by clicking on a submit button to, after they've provided that description, they can then go and get that resource provisioned instantly or almost instantly. You no longer have the, the need for human interaction to actually go and physically deal with all those different servers and networking gear and storage gear. It's up to a cloud to go and provision that resource on demand when requested to do so. Now, resources, as well as those core functionality of a cloud, are accessed and available over the network. And so that leads us to our second characteristic of a cloud, which is broad network access. As described earlier on when we were discussing on-demand self-service, right, the scenario that I provided at that point indicated that clients to IT go to some sort of web portal. So they go over the network, they describe their resource, they submit a request for that resource. All of that interaction occurs over the network. 
And so that's one example of how the network comes into the picture with the cloud. Now, secondly, when I go and provision my resource, which is that server that's running an application on top of an operating system and so on, then that application and that application's functionality can also be exposed and available over the network. So the network is crucial to ensure that the cloud is available to be used for provisioning, deprovisioning, and also accessing those provision resources afterwards. The third characteristic of a cloud is what we call a rapid elasticity. Now workloads change in terms of utilization once they've been deployed in the cloud. If I deploy my application, then that application then starts to get utilized by the users of that application. Now hopefully more and more users are hitting my application and when that occurs, I need to have some sort of mechanism that can provide this idea of elasticity, where I can go and scale out and scale back as needed, where I can add instances of my application and remove instances of my application as the workload fluctuates uh, through its life cycle. The fourth characteristic is what we call resource pooling. So we have pools of hardware within our data center on which the cloud is actually running on top of. Right, so we have a whole set or a whole slew of different servers that are gonna provide compute functionality. We have a whole other set of servers that are gonna go and provide storage functionality. And then we have a whole set of networking gear that will be used to go and provide the networking to the users of the cloud. <clears throat> when a user goes and requests for a resource to get provision, they have no indication and they have no idea where it actually lives in that data center. And really at the end of the day, they don't need to. They just need to know that it exists and that it is healthy. So this allows us or allows the administrator and the owner of the cloud to optimize and really make sure they are using all resources of the physical underlying infrastructure as effectively as possible to get the most bang for their buck at the end of the day. Our final characteristic of a cloud is what we call measured service. Now with measured service, what this indicates is there needs to be some mechanism or mechanisms in place that can go and collect utilization of the cloud. Who is using what in terms of compute capacity, in terms of storage, in terms of networking, and so on. Those metrics need to be gathered, they need to get stored, and then they potentially will need to get processed later on so that the owner of the cloud can effectively bill for the usage on, on that cloud itself.